Good morning. Welcome to our worship on the 31st of October in the year of our Lord, 2021. I'm the Reverend Wesley Elmore, the pastor here at Ridgecrest United Methodist Church in the high desert of California. We have a beautiful day here, and I hope wherever you are watching from, you're experiencing the, the glory and the joy that can be the fall season. I'm joined today by our tech team of Elliot and Amy. Our musicians are Patrick on uh, piano and organ. Yifin is our singer. We have Ted on guitar, Rob on flute, and Courtney on saxophone. And so I invite you to follow along either with the uh, sent out order of worship in the song sheet, or you can follow along on the TV screen as well. If you have some prayer concerns, you can place those in the comment section of Facebook during our live service, and we'll try to get to those later on during our prayer time as well. So please bow with me for our opening prayer. O oh, glorious and holy God, we thank you for who you are and who you call us to be. On this particular day, we need to be reminded that we are to draw near to you, to draw near to you in safety and sanctuary, but also in the fullness of your goodness that you offer us. Amen. Our opening hymn is, And Are We Yet Alive? Yeah. 
So that's our intro for our Halloween Day sermon. So thank you, Patrick, there on the, uh, the organ. So our scripture is just one scripture. It's from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 13. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against the enemies of blood and flesh, but against the ru rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places therefore take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm this is the word of the Lord thanks be to God so here we are on uh, Halloween, it's the secular holiday with Christian roots. By some accounts, it's one of the most popular holiday celebrations in America. I mean, I know that the candy industry, the costume industry, and the pumpkin industry all rejoice at this time of year. The day's Christian roots go back hundreds of years in which a special day was observed by the church to remember and honor those persons who had died in the faith. Originally, this day was placed close after Pentecost, but then a few centuries later, it got moved to November 1st. The name Halloween basically means the eve of the hallow, hallow's eve. And hallow is really holy, so it's All Holies Eve, which is the day before, the evening before what is to be celebrated. All Holies Day or All Saints Day. The church also came up with All Souls Day. So All Saints was first those persons who were identified primarily as martyrs in the faith, others, those Christians who there was no doubt that they had died either from persecution or because of their faith, and then later because of their example and strong witness. But then how do we recognize the other people, even though they're Christian, who have died and hence all souls? So just like at Christmas when we celebrate Christmas on the 25th, but Christmas Eve, the night before, is a, a big event, or even New Year's Eve before New Year's. So, too, All Hallows' Eve developed into Halloween. So it's really kind of almost a three-day celebration from the 31st, the 1st, and the 2nd. Now, outside of the church, this particular time of year is clearly shifted in focus to the Eve day, the 31st of October. And even depending on what your faith tradition is, even within the church, there may be a focus on all saints or there not, may not be any focus at all. Now one of the attractions, of course, of the religious aspects of this time is that it serves as a memorial time to remember those who have died. People die all the time, of course, but there are those people whose deaths touch us more deeply. There are those persons whose deaths we cannot forget. And so it's kind, considerable, honorable to remember and name those whose lives we had a connection to or they were somehow within our sphere. We remember especially our extended family or the family members of our friends or those within the church or from the workplace. And even sometimes the deaths of celebrities or famous people or military members, particularly in battle or other news-making deaths may affect us in a way. So we want to remember and so we, as people of faith, we, we can remember, of course, by in our prayers, prayers both 
of thanks for those who have died and for the life they lived and that they are in God's eternal keeping, but also prayers for those who remain and who mourn and suffer. But of course, there is also a mysterious or even frightful aspect to death. Violent or gruesome deaths can scar our psyche, and even peaceful deaths bring forth the stark reality that an absence has occurred. I've had the, the privilege and honor of being present with many persons, either at the time of the death or passing or, or after. And even though the body in many ways shows some continued aspect of the living, there is a distinct difference between a living body and a dead body. We speak of the body and the soul and the spirit, and we wonder about such things. We wonder about the spirits of the dead. What is this connection between the realm of the living and the realm of the dead? These are questions that go back to the beginning of humanity. They cut across all religious and cultural traditions. And intertwined into all this is the aspect that death is bad and that death may even be caused by bad things or even evil things. I mean, isn't one of the threats that is made, I'll kill you. That's generally seen as a bad thing. And superstitions easily develop to explain such things or attempt to prevent them. And so our Halloween of today, and Halloween is changed over the years and times, but ours of today is a, is a blend of Christian and pre-Christian festivals. There is this mingling of old traditions. There is the ancient Celtic traditions of, of fire festivals, bonfires on this last night of October, this period midway between the fall solstice and the winter solstice. And in that Celtic tradition, there is the belief that at certain times of year, the barrier between the living world and the spirit world, or the world of the dead, is, is very thin. And so ghosts and spirits and witches and things of evil were thought to be more readily active and able to roam more freely. And so all of this gets carried over into our understanding of Halloween. Of course, what is unseen and unknown is often viewed as dangerous or evil. So acts of evil or tricks may occur. And perhaps such things can be prevented by offering treats. Like many things, Halloween has become a cultural observance which can bend a focus toward fun and good or bend a focus to spite and meanness and evil. So how should Christians observe Halloween? I would suggest, like anything else, is what you are doing for good or for ill? Does it show kindness or meanness? Does it honor God and other people? Does it celebrate holy fun, or is it designed to bring horror for horror's sake only? You know, I've always found the reasoning behind the saying and what takes place on this day, trick or treat, to be an interesting thing. Trick or treat, you go to someone's house, and generally it's, it's children nowadays Adults go along as chaperones and escorts, but I show up unbidden. I wasn't asked to come, but I show up at a house, and I'm asking for a treat. Well, a treat's a good thing, but trick or treat, which means that if you don't give me a treat, I will trick you, I will prank you, I will do something mean to you. Now, one of the good things, I think, is that over the years, at least since the time when I was younger, is that I hear less and less things of the pranks and the tricks. 
I know that in the past, a, a common trick was to, what? Throw toilet paper on somebody's house, which isn't too much trouble. But what about taking soap and taking the soap and writing on the windows nasty things or knocking over mailboxes or as it was told to me from my father's time knocking over the outhouse out in the country sometimes with the people in it sometimes not I mean sure maybe you want to think that's funny but that's just downright mean things and especially if it's related and connected somehow to the fact you didn't give me a treat. I can't help but think that that's a theology counter to God's ways. God doesn't come to us and say, I'm going to give you tricks in case, in, in, in case you don't give me the good things. One of the attractions of Halloween, of course, is the, the chance to dress up in costume. Some religious traditions use Halloween to remember and celebrate the saints of the church. So it's a dressing up in costumes like them, like those saints or representing biblical characters or one throughout history. So you dress up as Peter the fisherman or Patrick of Ireland or Daniel in the lion's den or Mary the mother of Jesus or St. Francis of Assisi. The New Testament does speak of getting dressed for identity, dressed in Christ. In Colossians, it's, it is to put on Christ. We are to put on the attire of Christ. And in Ephesians, as we heard read in our scripture, it's to put on the full armor of God, which is not just identity, but it's also to be dressed for the spiritual warfare that is also out there. And Halloween is one of those times in which even if I think you don't have very much Christian practice and customs in your heritage, there's a sense that there is a spiritual warfare aspect to the night of Halloween. In general, wearing disguises is and can be fun. In the Bible, there are some instances of wearing disguises and there are disguises that are intended to what? To hide and not be caught. To hide one's identity. A few weeks ago, we went through a sermon series on Jacob. And Jacob wore a disguise. He put on skin so he could disguise himself like his hairy brother Esau. And he got away with it, even though there was some questioning about it. But... The Bible also has words about what this means. In Paul's second letter to the Corinthians in the 11th chapter, Paul is, is writing about those who are attempting to subvert his ministry and the ministry of other genuine Christians. And also a word against the devil. He writes, For such boasters are false apostles, they're deceitful workers. They are disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. When Paul says that, he's not praising them for disguising that way. He's saying they're people that are trying to pass themselves off as good people when really their intention is evil. And then Paul says, even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is not strange if his ministers also disguise themselves as ministers of righteousness. Their end will match their deeds. In other words, seeking to disguise ourselves in that way for deception, for trickery, for bad, is not a good thing. And I suppose that if we're looking at a Halloween costume, that's not the type of Halloween costume we want to put in and wear on. Halloween is, as I mentioned earlier, a time in which there is a sense that the, the spirits of the dead or ghosts are prevalent. And so there is this element of what can be fright to it. Halloween 
has a sense of terror or horror or scaring behind it. One line of thought in all of this is that it's all in fun and that people like to be scared. And that is true. I know people who, who like those types of things, that aspect of scaring, to go to a haunted house or to watch horror movies and, and all of that. Some modern churches I've known about, they will create a hell-themed haunted house in order to warn people about doing things that will cause them to land in hell. You could say that the intent is to scare the hell out of them and heaven into them. The scenes in those types of haunted houses show the imagery that you can find in other places in the Bible that speak of a lake of fire where people are cast in. Unfortunately, some of that is then transferred into the general populace in which that becomes something that is glorified and even worshipped to the extent of which horror and fright for horror's sake is the norm without any understanding of perhaps what is behind it. The goal, I think, for Halloween from those of us that seek to follow Jesus is to recognize that whatever aspect that we seek to follow in the cultural and secular aspects of the day, that we can do so with an emphasis toward the fun, but at the same time recognize that it is an opportunity at large within the world in which there are people that will use this same day as an opportunity to emphasize and spread evil. And finally, it is an occasion that we should really be using to enter in to honor our deceased loved ones, to celebrate the faithfulness of ordinary people, along with the, the extraordinary feats of those most exalted saints that we know about, either through Scripture or through history. And so, it is a way to turn away from that which is horror to that which is good. Paul's letter to the Ephesian in this closing chapter is a recognition that there are these things that are out in the world. There are these occasions in which people will turn to evil, in which evil will influence and guide people and sway them in that way. Paul was letting us know that there is indeed a spiritual battle being waged within our world. It is out there. And one of the, the best defenses against that battle is to at least be aware of it. It's, it's almost like instructing your children that Yes, here is the road in which cars and vehicles and drive back and forth, and maybe the road in front of your house is relatively calm, but there are busier roads. There's huge roads, and there are vehicles going back and forth at incredible speeds. Those are not safe places to play. You need to be careful when you're there, and especially as you grow older and get your driver's license and learn to drive. You need to be aware that it's dangerous out there. That's what Paul was doing with his letter. And so Paul's Halloween costume for Christians is the armor of God. We didn't have read the part that goes in some of the detail about those different parts they are, but it's all designed to stand against the wiles of the devil. There is one thing I think is positive about this confluence of secular and religious holidays, and particularly maybe of all the holidays of the year with Halloween, is that it is an opportunity to understand one of the great themes of God in our lives, and that is redemption. Because redemption is about taking that 
which is sinful or bad or evil or even broken and reclaiming it for good. That's what God wants to do in this world. We are going to live our lives making choices about what we choose to observe and what we choose to follow and how we choose to live our lives. Not just on Halloween, but through all things. We are on a spiritual journey. Father Richard Rohr, who's uh, written many books, he, he writes about this aspect that all of us are actually the beloved children of God and that a big struggle in our life in a way, it's analogous to the struggle of, of good and evil is this struggle to come to understand that which is the sinful and the bad nature and that which is the good nature and that God's intent is to proclaim that which is good within our lives. He writes, If we seek God out of guilt or fear or shame, we're not going to go very far. If we start negative, we will stay negative. And so he says we have to begin positive by a wonderful experience, by something that's larger than our own lives, that's something that dips into us, into the depths of our own being. He goes on to write in this particular article about his experience of being a chaplain in jails in Albuquerque, New Mexico. He says, I'm convinced that people make great mistakes because they've never heard what Jesus heard on the day of his baptism. They've never heard a human voice, much less a voice from heaven, speak to them, you are a beloved son, you are a beloved daughter, and with you I am well pleased. When reading that, I couldn't help but think about what's the message of Halloween? Is it proclaiming that we are the beloved goodness that God is trying to reclaim and move into this way? Or is it pushing us toward the badness and the evil side of us? Roar goes, the only purpose of the gospel and even religion is to communicate that one and eternal truth. This is God's love. And once we have it straight, he says, nothing can stop us and no one can take it away from us. My job, he writes, and any preacher's job is to try to replicate and resound that eternal message of God that initiates everything good on this earth, that you are the beloved child of God. One of the mystics of the Middle Ages, a woman named Julian of Norwich, wrote, in her revelations of divine love, she says, the beloved soul is, is preciously knit to God in its making by a knot so subtle and so mighty that it is one in God. And in this oneing, it is made endlessly holy. Furthermore, God wants us to know that all souls which will be saved in heaven without end are knit in this knot and one in this wanting and made holy in this holiness. My hope and wish for you on this Halloween day is that you would understand that amidst all the, the celebrations that are out there that it is a time to recognize the belovedness of God the redemption calling of God, and that those who are our loved ones who have gone before, whom we are actually asked to take time to pause, to honor and remember, that they are beloved as well, and that we can actually draw close to them in this holy time. Next Sunday, the first Sunday of November, we will celebrate all Saint Sunday and our Memorial Sunday here at our church. And that will be a time to draw near to God in prayer and remembrance. 
And so I hope you can join us either online or in person for this as well. Let us pray. Dear Holy God, we thank you for your love which is more powerful than evil. And help us grasp and hold on to this love in whatever activities that we engage in so that we can be assured that your foundation is stronger than anything that is banging and blowing and hammering against it. Amen. strength is
invite you to settle your spirits and enter this time of uh, prayer. I understand we don't have any specific prayer requests that have come across uh, through online posting. I do want to uh, let you know, if you haven't heard already, that uh, uh, Barbara Jane um, died yesterday morning up at her room at the High Desert Haven. And uh, her daughter Karen was with her in the time and that she went uh, peacefully. And so I um, want to keep her family in your prayers as well. And when we have details on a memorial service, we'll get that information out. Also, keep in mind those that are uh, traveling, uh, safety for our communities and wherever community that you are in terms of uh, trick-or-treating or activities related to Halloween later on tonight. Um, prayers for those persons around the world that are engaged in the spiritual battles of good versus evil as they live out their faith and bear witness to uh, an allegiance and a claim to Jesus Christ as they seek to follow him. And in the same way, however that is for you in your own life here. So let us go to God in prayer. God, we pray for the protection, the full armor of God in particular for those persons that will be going forth on Halloween celebrations in our community, but also around the world in those places where Halloween is, is celebrated. We ask that you would guard and protect the hearts and minds of those people who may be invited or tricked or swayed to engage in evil activities, even if it seems to be harmless in the invitation. We pray that you would help us know what it is that is worth knowing about our life with you, that we would love what is worth loving, that we would praise what delights you most, that we would value what is precious to you, and that we in turn would reject what is ever is evil in your eyes. So we ask for this discernment that we might judge rightly between things that differ so that we can search out and seek and do what is pleasing to you. Enable us to be your people, wholesome and holy in our lives. O oh Lord, we pray together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for your continued gifts in the ministries of this church and other uh, organizations that you support. A uh, reminder that we are entering into the, the season in which Thanksgiving and Christmas are coming fast. And one of the mission outreaches that we do in this time is to provide holiday food baskets for those um, 
that uh, are struggling. And so if you would like to help fund those that we provide, um, you can make a, a gift and offering and designate as holiday food baskets, and that will go toward purchasing the, the food and the items and supplies that will be given out at both the week prior to Thanksgiving and the week prior to Christmas. And so thank you for your help in that way. Please join in our closing hymn wherever you are. May you be blessed and strengthened in these holy days that you might wear the full armor of God as a protection against the spiritual forces that are out there, but also as a sign of identity. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.